Welcome to another Edgewonk review and this is another interesting one where we have a profitable system and the trader sent us this review and asking about a specific question mostly around his optimization on his exits. So let's try to find out what is going on here and let's see if we can help this trader move forward, improve his approach and get new impulses. So what we can do first is we go to the chart lab and because he asked specifically about exit analysis, let's try to break this down. The first thing that I noticed is that his updraw on the losses is really, really small. So on his losing trades, the price almost never or just barely moves into his favor. And that shows that the losses fail right away without a lot of upside here. That's something interesting to keep in mind. At the same time, when he has a winning trade, they rarely move against him. You can see here the drawdown on his winning trades is only minus 37%. So this means that on his winning trades, the price only moves 37% against him. Let's try to find out and let's try to drill down a little bit more. So we open the filter and the outcome filter. We want to first look at the winning trades. So what we can see here are a few things. First of all, we can see that the average updraw on his winning trades is 73%. So the price on average makes it 73% towards his target and doesn't really fully hit his target. So it seems like his targets are a little bit set too optimistically. But what is really interesting here is the drawdown. When he has winning trade, the price rarely moves a lot against him. Of course, there are some trades where the price moves against him more, but on average, the price rarely makes it here below the 50 area. So this means that the stops for this trader are set maybe too far away. And what he could try is boost his reward to risk ratio by moving his stop loss closer. I wouldn't recommend to just cut the stop loss in half and use half of his usual size, but maybe try this gradually because it seems like that could help him boost his reward to risk ratio. What happens is if you move your stop loss closer to your entry, you can also potentially increase your position size, not in percentage terms, but how much you're risking per point. Because now you have a smaller stop loss and to achieve the same percentage risk as before, you could increase your point risk. That might be something to think about. And it's the first major finding that I think is really worth pointing out here. Now let's take a look at his losing trades. So we switch to losses here. And what we can see is that we rarely have any uh, green bars here for his losses. And this means that when he is in a losing trade or when he is realizing a losing trade, the price doesn't make it into profit at all. Most of his losses fail right from the start. Some have a little bit of an updraw, a positive balance, but the number is really, really small. We can see it here. The average updraw on losses is 21%. So on average, when he is realizing a losing trade, the price only made it 25% towards his target. And as I said before, moving his stop loss closer to the entry would not change anything here, particularly for his losing trades. They would still end up being losses. And that is something that could really benefit the trader. Another thing that I noticed is that there are quite a few trades where the exit marker, the black diamond marker here, exceeds the stop loss. And this means that the trader probably widened the stop loss. So, so let's open some of the trades here. And yeah, you can see the trader wrote widen stop loss. Here, another one, you can see he said he widened the stop loss. It wasn't a good idea. He just realized a larger loss and that is generally a very bad trading behavior. Another one here, he also said this is a revenge trade and that is generally something that traders have to avoid. And very often this can become a bad habit and if this is becoming a bad habit, then you're realizing losses that are larger than they should be. And typically you will not save a losing trade by widening a stop loss. Generally, you will just realize a loss that is much larger than it should have been. So this is, I think, the first major finding here about the updraw and the drawdown. I would first focus on trying to play around with the stop loss here to see if you can boost your reward to risk ratio here. After you have done that, the trader could also try to play around with his take profit. The price rarely reaches his take profit, so it seems like the take profit is set a little bit too optimistic here. I want to move on to the trade management graph because I found this also quite interesting. And what we can see is that the potential performance, the green one is above the actual performance, which means that he's mismanaging his trades. 
So he's leaving money on the table by actively managing his trades. Can we see that again? So average updraw on his winning trades is 73%. So that shows how much the price is moving into his favor. And the average exit is at 66%. So he's leaving a little bit of money on the table. Not too much, but there's definitely room for improvement as well. And the trader seems to be actively mismanaging his trades. And this graph confirms that. Another thing that I want to point out is that he had this major dip in his performance here. So when we go to our drawdown graph, we can see that at his worst point, there was a 23% drawdown in his account. And this is this drop here. A 23% drawdown is quite significant when you lose a quarter of your trading account. When we look at some of the trades here, we can just hover over the line graph and see that this was the trade we've already seen. Widen the stop loss and revenge trading. Let's take a look at another one. Classic revenge trade. Let's see at this revenge trade, another one. Another thing that I noticed here is the very, very steep rise. So in a matter of a few trades, he recovered all of his drawdown and surpassed that. A steep incline like this can sometimes point towards over leveraging, which means that maybe in the drawdown he's getting frustrated and he wants to get back to break even quicker. And then some traders will increase their risk. I'm not saying that this is what happened, but when you see that your equity graph is falling and rising in a very extreme fashion compared to previously, that can often highlight uh, problems or issues with the risk management and taking too much risk. Another very interesting thing that I found is here in the custom statistic, and he has a custom statistic called time frame, and this bar here really stands out. It's the one minute time frame, and he has taken 58 trades on the one minute time frame with a very, very good profit here, much larger than any other time frame. So it seems like that this time frame is really working out for the trader. Let's try to drill down on this so we can open the advanced filter and then we only want to look at the one minute time frame. And when we now go to the exit analysis, what we can see the average updraw on the winning trades is 75%. So the price still doesn't make it towards his target and the target seems to be a little bit far away. But you can see the average exit on the winning trade is much better. Before we had 66%, now we are much closer to the optimal price. So it seems like here he's exiting his trades more efficiently and not leaving too much money on the table. But we can also see on the trade management graph that there is some room for improvement. The potential performance is above the actual performance. So it seems like he's still mismanaging the trades on the one minute. And that is also something to keep in mind. However, what I would say or recommend to this trader to streamline his process a little bit and to avoid a lot of noise and to only focus on one aspect that is really working for the trader is only trade one minute time frame trades for maybe a few weeks to see how it goes. And by eliminating all of the other noise, he can probably streamline his process, his routines, his analysis, and also when monitoring and waiting for trades, he doesn't have to jump around time frames, but he can stay focused on just one time frame that is working. Let's take a look at the setup. And here it's something that I've seen quite often lately is this trader has 22 setups. That sounds a little bit too much. Another thing that I noticed is he has this huge red bar and this is tagged with none. So he has taken 20 trades that have no setup. And that shows that he's breaking his rules and he's entering random trades. And this is something that needs to be avoided. Without that, his performance would look very different. So he's losing 570 US dollar. It's going to the journal and you can see he has a net return of 2000 US dollar. So without those 500 losses, his performance would look much, much different and much better. So first of all, that's a major finding and shows the trader that he has a lot of noise in his system and that he needs to avoid those trades that don't follow any rules. At the same time, what we can see is that he have three, maybe four setups that are performing really well. So it's here, shorting highs, 16 trades. That's a okay sample size. He has pattern 20 trades with his best performance and here 12 trades on buying lows. Those three setups are making most of his profits. This one is also all right, momentum, but he only has four trades in it so far. So it's not really that meaningful of a sample size yet. 
But going forward, he could try to focus only on those three setups. Again, the goal is to eliminate noise, to focus more on what is working well and to streamline his process. Everything will be much easier um, when he is focusing on only what is working. And this trader has a good sample size. He has over 100 trades in his journal. And with that number, you can already see really nicely what is working. You have a good sample size. The data is meaningful enough to give you some practical tips or to show you which direction to go to. Just out of curiosity, let's take a look at only of those setups where he actually has a setup. So we're looking at all the setups except for the trades that don't follow any rules. So we just open the setups and then we are selecting all except for the ones that are random trades where he broke his rules. And you can see it looks different. It still has the dip here, but the dip now is looking better. It's 17% versus 24%, 25%. Still quite a big dip, but it looks a little bit smoother and not as volatile here. But next, I want to look only at the setups that are performing really well. And after we have selected only those for really nicely performing setups, we can see that the dip now is much, much lower. So if we would have only traded those setups, he would have been able to avoid this big drawdown. Going to the drawdown, now you can see the worst drawdown for all of the four setups that are working is only 6.5%. So that's a huge, huge difference. And his account is much more nicely rising. So that is something that should open the eyes for the trader and help him move forward and to also confirm that he can avoid all of this other noise and for at least a few weeks focus only on the really big money makers for his trading. And I would leave it really at that. There's no need to dig further. There's no need to dig into other performance metrics because those are currently the more or less low hanging fruits. Those are the things that really stand out. And in your review, you always want to look for where you're losing the most money currently, because if you can change that, that will have the most significant impact on your further account performance and looking for what is working well and focus really on that to eliminate all other noise. That's typically how you want to approach your performance review.